All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, really exciting segment for today. I'm here with John from Accelerated Technologies. John, I've heard a lot about you. We haven't actually met until yesterday, but I've watched you, I've seen your videos. And talk to us just a little bit about what Accelerated Technologies does. So first of all, thank you for coming. It's, <laughs> it's great to be on the show. Um, our background is, is motorcycle racing. Is we gained a lot of experience at the track, talking to riders, uh, listening to riders, working through their setup concerns, and we've been able to take that background and apply it to snowmobiles. Snowmobiles are such unique vehicles, they have a center. No other vehicle really has a center to them, and so we, we talk to our customers and we, we work around their desires, we train them on how a snowmobile kind of works, we give them some ideas on setup and tuning, mm -hmm. and then we kind of listen to them and see what they want. If, is the sled underperforming from what they bought? Did they buy a shock package that's very entry level and limiting? Do they have high expectations from that new machine as they should mm -hmm. and then we just we kind of work from there and uh, and try to give them what they want in a setup so and are you finding that you know you'll get a lot of different types of riders i mean obviously the guys who are probably more aggressive are probably looking for certain setups but what about sort of someone like myself maybe a moderate to aggressive trail ride we we get a great mixture we get you know, we don't get a lot of 18 year olds in the door. They, they can hardly afford to snowmobile, right? <laughs> uh, we've all been there, but, but we've, we, we get people who are, you know, underwhelmed maybe with the, the snowmobile that they've bought. Or now more and more and more people have come to us because their friends have come to us or they rode a machine that we set up. Right. And they're like, wow, that thing works so much better. And, and underlying safety, you know, if, if you can't get through a corner and stay on your side of the trail, we got a problem, right? Something's so yeah. we got a, we work on, we work on that with anyone that comes in the door. But yeah, we, we get a lot of the aggressive riders that, that think they're fast or they are the quicker guy or girl in the group. And then right up to guys, some of our customers are in their 80s. And they still are snowmobiling, you know, God love them. And, and we want to give them a very, very comfortable machine that isolates them from the bumps. Uh, they're not going that fast. So we, we kind of listen to what the rider wants and tailor our, our setup and the, and the product that we deliver to that, to that request. That's great. And so, I mean, I've heard from, again, a lot of my buddies have brought their sleds to you. I've talked to Clark over at Bergstrom. I know you're doing a sled right now. Um, like, talk a little bit about the experience. When guys come in there and they bring the, the sled, I mean, I've heard it's an amazing, you're very thorough, you're very detailed, and you sit down, and there's a lot that goes there, into it. There is, and, and we love that part of the job, you know, it's because any shop perhaps could sell them the parts, right. right? But what we take a special pride in is being able to explain what each of these components does, because everybody has a budget, right? We can't mm -hmm. put stage five Elkas on everybody's sled. It's, right. But so we, we bring the sled in, we put it on the dollies, we, we put the rider on and we show them the sag numbers. We talk about why a certain sag is important. And then we walk through all the products that we have and what we would recommend after listening to them, after after seeing what what their goal is, right? Okay. Are they, do they have a problem with with turning? Is it safety? Is it bump compliance? Is it uh, what, what is it? So so yeah, we we work with that and we we listen to them and and and, and provide that, and then we we do the job, and then we spend an hour on the way out of the shop training them, okay. right? So we we say okay, you know we. We, we put a spring package on the front of the sled to get the A-arms flat, bring the motor down between the spindles so it dramatically reduces body roll, right? We'll look at either a dual rate spring or we'll put a set of Elka shocks on that have dual rate springs. And that really helps improve the comfort of the front end. The ski is able to follow the terrain really exquisitely, isolates them from bumps, reduces bar effort, 
Clark, the Bergstrom products help us do that up yep. front. And then out the back, we put in the right torsion springs. Depending on the model of the sled, we may suggest a rear shock or the revalve of that rear shock. Okay. And then we go to the middle, we talk about the, the importance of the center spring on the middle of the package of the snowmobile, because there's a lot of misconception about that center spring and what it does. And then the limiter strap too. Again, there's a lot of people that say, oh my God, don't touch the limiter strap. Yeah, well, why the Skidoo engineers put six holes in it, there's right? A so there's a reason. <laughs> and then we, we talk about the front, we talk about the back, we talk about the center, and we talk about tuning. And then we establish a plan on what we're going to do, okay? What is your budget? What are your expectations? Okay, this is, if you have $1,000, if you have $800 or four grand, uh -huh. this is how I would spend it to just blow you away with what we what we can do and then we train them on the way out we train them on when to adjust compression and rebound if they've bought that yep. when to adjust the limiter strap how to adjust the rear preload on the machine to keep the sag set because a lot of people say oh well, my wife gets on back or my partner i think i should turn the preload up yeah what about snow accumulation right oh, i never thought about that you know, we've weighed 50, 60, 70 pounds of slush and ice just in the tunnel. Up in the tunnel. You know, that makes I've, sense. I've ridden a sled over the course of the day and it's just going like this. And then <laughs> at one in the afternoon, I can't get through a corner, get off, and there's like four inches of sag without me on it in the back end. And right. One old timer said, I keep a stick in there and I dig Jack it out. Up. And I said, oh, it's cool. We do. We carry around a mallet. Yeah, and in yeah. the morning, this guy right here, he'll come out with a mallet and, and we'll bang, start sacking yeah. all the ice out of it. So that, and that's, that means you're aware of it. So right. and that's super cool. But our, our philosophy is, hey, in another two kilometers, it's going to be right back in oh, there. Right. So, so, yeah, you can clean it out, and that's great. And if the temperature changing or the humidity is changing, uh, but let's accommodate for that weight. Let's turn the preload up. So we pick, uh, we've got a t tower of springs here, yeah. but we have, I think, nine BRP torsion springs, five Polaris springs, three Arctic Cat Pro Cross Yamaha springs that we pick from to set that rear sag properly on preload one. So that when you put a fuel on the back, when you put snow in the tunnel, when you put a passenger on back, you can now You're correct sure. for it with a preload. Yeah, right? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of guys will say, oh, I can hit I can hit that three inches of sag, just turn her to five. It's like, oh, what about just 70 pounds ice? So, oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah, we kind of train you on why that's important, and then we train you on the limiter strap and when would you, when would you shorten it and when would you lengthen it. If you run into a beat up trail, how do you accommodate for that? What do you do with the strap and the coupler block? So it's it's fun. It's it, the guys come away and girls come away with a huge understanding of what they have now, and it's so cool to train them on how to tune it. You know, because they're like, oh my God, I can't wait till it snows they understand now. It. They understand it. And right. it, it's not rocket science, but, but once someone has taken the opportunity to, to, uh, to kind of walk you through that setup, it's, it's, it's knowledge that'll stay with you for life. For sure. I charge you once, <laughs> but now you've got that tool, the toolbox that you can tune your snowmobile with as you move. And because you might pop off an Articat and onto a Yamaha or a Skidoo and say, oh, that one was crap and this one's awesome. Well, it was just how it was set up, right? They all have amazing capability to be very good. They're all littered with adjusters that nobody really knows what to do, what to with, do with, right? It. So, and the dealers, they try, but they don't have the time or the, uh, the, the knowledge base that we're lucky to have, right? So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity to to help, we we say what we do is we come in after the dealer mm -hmm. and we really help customize the machine to the rider. Whether it's a motorcycle, ATV side by side, or a snowmobile, you know that's that's we we get the opportunity to do that. Cool, that's awesome. And so, John, what's the best way for you know folks out there? We have a lot of guys in, 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 that are watching our channel from Ontario. Best way for them to sort of get in touch and give us a call, give us a phone call. Um, and then we will we'll look, we'll see if we can get you in for an appointment. Our appointments fill up pretty darn quick. Uh, we might not be able to get you to, to January or even February, but 
but don't lose hope because then you get a chance to maybe ride your new sled stock. Right. Uh, a funny story is Clark from Bergstrom said, hey, he was a long time cat guy and he switched was, to Skidoo. Yeah. And uh, he said, I want to bring you in my sled. And I said, no, you ride, ride it first. stock first. <laughs> and he called me and he said, man, I thought oh, I'm pretty underwhelmed. And I said, okay, now bring it in. And then he's been our biggest salesman ever since. So, because awesome. uh, we, we kind of walk him through, we train him and show him what we can do and why, and then enjoy it. Right? So John, one of the things that I noticed when I first picked up my uh, my mock was that, you know, I was uh, running the Smart Shocks on, on, on that sled, obviously, and, and going down the trail, and I would switch from, I love the adjustability of going from low, yeah, medium yeah. to high, right? Yeah. And it's great, and I think a lot of guys out there who are buying those sleds, that's what they were looking for, was almost like, let's dumb it down, let's make it easy and give you three settings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I noticed, though, was the soft setting super soft like way too soft couldn't even ride it right yeah medium setting for me seemed okay so on sport on the sport setting yep, it seemed yep. all right and then as soon as i went to sport plus it was like rock hard yeah. and it seemed to me like it was way way stiff right so talk to me a little bit about what some of the i mean i know you've seen a ton of smart shocks come through the shop a lot of guys with mocks a lot of guys with the xrs 850s talk to me a little bit about you know what you've heard from from other other customers out there. Awesome, yeah. So when when we started, when we realized we we partnered with Precision EFI out of out of Saint Eustache, Quebec, uh, and once we knew they had the ability to fix what we wanted to fix, we started to get real excited, right? Because I bought an XRS 850 with smart shocks, thought super cool. This is the way of the future. We got to know this stuff. Get a hold of it. So we hopped on the sled and went, oh, whoa, I don't like any of these three modes. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I could feel the difference. And, and when we, Precision gave us the ability to put, put the sled into what we call showroom mode. Okay. So then the engine doesn't have to be running. So first of all, no, if you push on the sled, it should be locked up. Yeah. That's one way to tell if the shocks are, haven't failed. But in showroom mode, we were able to kind of push on the bumper and get some initial low speed impressions of the shock. And yeah, the front comfort is crazy soft. Super soft. Super soft. I get motion sickness on the stock flash. The thing is so loose. And then we, the, a neat trick to do is to put zip ties or if, if we service the shock, we put O-rings on the shock shafts. And then we ride the thing at a moderate pace. Hop off, look at it bottomed ski shocks are both bottom and i'm talking a jogging pace right yeah. so it is way too soft soft equals comfort yes if it's not bottoming but as soon as it bottoms that impact comes through the chassis and you, you feel it. it tells you i can't go any quicker yeah so we want comfort to be usable you know so we have this great section of beat up trail on the way to the groom trail from our facility so uh so yeah we we kind of we, we, were, we were able to really diagnose comfort settings. And then we switched to sport, and we started working with precision and looking at the data, looking at the numbers. And going from comfort to sport is like 5% stronger. I can't even That's feel it. that difference, right? And I've been pushing on bumpers for, God, 25 years, right? <laughs> I couldn't feel the difference. And then you go to sport plus, and Tucker Hibbert could run that stuff, you know, and, and overshoot a triple, right? So it was like, oh, wow, you know, and, and I can't just pick on BRP. Uh, the other, the Fox QS3, same deal. P1, wicked soft. P2, about the same. P3, wham, it's locked, right? So we, I thought, I thought, awesome, we can, we can fix this, right? That's, that's easy. And then the rear skid in comfort setting, yeah, it feels, feels okay, it feels plush. Sport, the rebound's locked up. It like takes four seconds to recover. That's okay when you hit one bump every, a minute, but you know, on a Sunday when the railway lines beat to hell, the sled's gotta come back, right, and be ready for the next bump. So we fixed the rebound issue in the rear, we, in, in Sport and especially Sport Plus. And then we found some neat stuff about what the rear was doing uh, in 
on the trail. You know, it was very soft initially, and then the, the snowmobile, the position, the rotary sensors in the rear arms were watching the, the motion of the rear arm and then pinning the compression and stopping the shock. And then you'd go into the seat and it'd fire you out of the seat. <laughs> so it was like, wow, you know. But, but with the help of our test crew, my wife Jen is invaluable. She's super picky and super sensitive to, uh, to changes on a snowmobile. I'm pretty, pretty fast and pretty technical. Uh, Mark Wilkins is a world champion driver for Hyundai Motor Cars. He oh, wow. tests okay. for me. Uh, we've got Mike Ferguson, an uh, engineer that looks at our data. And then we got two riders from Precision with mocks. So the work we were doing on the XRS 850, mm -hmm. every flash we updated, we sent to them and they test drove it on the mock because we get that question a lot. Is, 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 it, is, is it gonna work for 22? Is it gonna work for 23 or 24? And there are some changes in the ECU, but the end calibration we think is gonna be the same. Okay. The, the skids are the same. The mock, yeah, it sits a little lower, but it has the same, goes over the same bumps, right? Uh, and then we, so what we want to do is we want to get the spring rate right first. The torsion springs are crazy soft in Very the mock. soft in the mock, yeah. And, and too soft in the XRS unless you're 140 pounds. So we get the right torsion springs under you, hold the sag up, and then, and then our flash we think has done a great job of now giving you three settings that are like 25%, 25%, 25% stronger so you feel them. They're applicable for the speed you're going, we feel, and we fixed a bunch of the stuff that we found uh, was available on the table um, from BRP. The, the capability and the intelligence and the design of the system is amazing. And we just changed the settings changed a little bit, bit, right? Sure. So I can't take away from BRP the, the masterpiece that that is. I just think a bunch of people were kind of underwhelmed by the by the, the end settings that were chosen. So that we, we hope we've done a good job and, and make a big improvement in that. So. Fantastic. And so, again, this is basically just an adjustment of the ECU that controls the suspension, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's two ECUs in the machine. There's the main one that's doing all the work, and then the sub-ECU, the KYB ECU, if, if you're sending us, us one for a flash, it's, it's under the hood, under the exhaust, and, and, and we flash that one. It's working separate. So, so yeah, that's the one we work with. Perfect. And so guys who are capable, they can take that out of their sled and basically just mail it into you. You guys can do the flash and send it back. Yeah, we can, or a precision EFI dealer from anywhere in the world is able has access to our to flash that. so so yeah we would we would love the business but the the precision efi network has has the capability uh, uh, to do that flash on our behalf so well guys if you're watching this uh, definitely get in touch with john you can get uh, get an appointment set up take your sled in talk to him these guys are the suspension experts we got a lot to learn I and mean, we thought we knew something until we talked to John. So we'll hopefully get one of our sleds into you and we'll see if we can oh, get her set up properly. Absolutely, and if you can't get in to see us, we got good technical people on the phone. We can ship you a box of parts and walk you through how to do it yourself. So Perfect. we got a tremendous pile of great customers in the US, uh, Nunavut, Alaska, oh, wow. Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, all over the place. Uh, it's fun. every. Every day I look at the boxes going out and it's like Wisconsin and Michigan and Florida, you know? <laughs> Florida, one, Florida. One, one, one great customer so has there. a home in Florida <laughs> and a, a place in the UP, so. Okay, uh, gotcha. So yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate you having me on and uh, hope, hopefully we've given you some idea what we do. Yeah, that's great, appreciate it. Thanks awesome. so much for talking to us. Awesome, thanks. Mike. Thank you. Yeah.